Hey everybody, time for another tutorial video. This time I'm going to be showing you guys a mod called Aloft. Aloft is a fully customizable nameplate replacement mod. It allows you to add extra information like mana, threat, player titles. Aloft is a really handy mod now with 3.3 release because they increased the range on the nameplate function. So now you can really see nameplates of things that are far enough away that you don't aggro them, like this huge group of guys for instance, which I did aggro after all. This profile that I've created is just a sample, it's kind of a vanity sample. Uh, that frame looks really nice and appealing to the eye when you're just looking at one, but it turns out it's not very feasible for things like rating or doing an instance, because when you get a ton of these on your screen you can see it just becomes kind of overwhelming. So in order to correct that, I've made a second profile here that contains just a more clean, concise version. You still have the target level, the health level, and the health frame that it also doubles as a cast bar frame. So if you've used mods like Grid or Pitbull, you're probably familiar with the waterfall design GUI. And the first thing you're going to want to go into here is to create a new profile for yourself. So. I'm going to make a new one, call it new2. The next thing you're going to want to go through is the modules and this is where you kind of have to decide. You can do this after you've, you've made your first profile but you're going to want to go through all these and figure out which of these modules you want. Now keep in mind you want to keep this down to a, a bare minimum because you don't want to overwhelm yourself with information on your screen which is what each of these modules represents. Modules you might find useful include a loft threat, Alof mana, Alof health text, Alof caspar. I'm going to keep this tutorial relatively simple, so I'm only going to check Alof alpha and Alof threat and Alof health text. The first thing I'm going to change is the frame itself. I'm going to make it a little bit wider so it can fit some extra characters on there. And I'll shrink it down to size 10 height. I'm not going to mess with the positioning yet because I haven't added any of the extra bars in. The next thing I'm going to go to is the health bar. And I want to use a different uh, background texture, so I'm going to switch this to flat. And I'm going to leave the height and the alpha alone. If you want a border on your nameplates, the place to do it is back in frame. Uh, we'll go ahead and put a dialog border on there. And lastly, we're going to add a health text percentage. And it's actually looking pretty good sitting over there adjusted on the right side with that font. So I'm going to leave that as is. But you can see here, you can adjust the positioning. If you want on the left, you can anchor it to the left or the right and so forth. The next thing I'm going to adjust is the name text. And the main thing I'm concerned with is the font because that's going to be pretty hard to read as is. I'm going to set this to accidental presidency, leave the outline at normal, and adjust the font size to 12. Additionally, I want the level text to be sitting on the left side of the name. So I'm going to anchor this to the left, and there it sits. So there we have a very rudimentary profile for ourselves. Uh, one thing that you'll notice here is that the target selected is fully opaque, whereas there's a alpha modifier in for the non-target. If I deselect, then they all become fully opaque, and the way to control that is here in alpha. Now, in order to not use the default, you have to enable the target and then enable the non-target, and I'm actually going to crank this down a little bit to, say, 0.6. Now I have my target and the rest of them fade out comfortably. You can tweak this to your desire or not use it at all. The next thing I want to look at is the cast bar and the aggro module. And that's what you're seeing here as stock. So starting with the nameplate glow for the thread indicator, I'm going to go ahead and switch the style to PRTL soft and adjust the size so that the width is just about matched to the frame of the health bar. 
which for me is 140. Next I'm going to go into the cast bar and make some adjustments there. So let's get one up. And we're looking at two different types of cast bars. There's the interruptible cast bar and the uninterruptible cast bar. Most of the time you're going to be concerning yourself with the interruptible cast bar. So let's go ahead and switch our texture here to flat as well. And we're going to leave it borderless. We'll make the background color a little more opaque and leave it dark like that. Switch the cast bar to something a little more monochromatic. And there we have it. It turns out that I want my cast bar to appear above the health frame. So what I do is I go into the position and I adjust the vertical offset so that it's plus 12 instead of minus 12. And now it will sit on top of the frame. Now that's all good, but I really want a little bit more information on my cast bar so that I can maybe interrupt it or see exactly what the cast is other than the icon. So I'm going to go into modules and enable cast bar spell name text and cast bar time text. Let's fix the icon a little bit. We'll make it a little bigger. Set it to 14. Adjust the position so that it's anchored on the right side of the left which should put it at the end of the bar. Now we're going to adjust the Y offset so that it is flush with the bottom of the cast bar and it should look real good like that. Now that's all good but I really want a little bit more information on my cast bar so that I can maybe interrupt it or see exactly what the cast is other than the icon. So I'm going to go into modules and enable cast bar spell name text and cast bar time text. The last thing I'm going to adjust is I'm going to turn off the state icon, make sure that's disabled, and I'm going to adjust the rate icon so it's a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it fully opaque by cranking the alpha up, and I'm going to set its position to be on the left of the top right, which puts it all the way anchored to the right side of the frame and now you've got everything consolidated. Now that we've got our frame kind of laid out how we like it, we can see the first potential problem is that there's a lot of overlap with uh, the different frames being displayed. And In order to fix that, we need to go into the frame options and adjust the packing height and width. Now I've determined by playing around with these that 18 height and 45 width are the dimensions that I need to adjust mine and you're gonna have to go through and play around with yours to see what you need to set it at. And now that we've got it set, you can see that I can scroll around and there's no clipping or overlap going on with any of my frames, so it looks better. Now just for fun, I'm gonna add a custom mouse over highlight, and I'm gonna do that by going into health bar, highlight, setting the blend mode to add, the texture to frost, and I'm going to make this a nice light frosty blue with the alpha set about two-thirds of the way up. And now you can see when I highlight over any of these that it gets a nice little frosty glow to it. So that about wraps it up for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, if you have questions, post them and I'll answer them as best I can.